Dear students, in this lecture, we are going to discuss effect of change in excitation of an alternator operating in parallel with an infinite bus bar. In previous lecture, we discussed the effect of change in mechanical input, where we observed that by increasing mechanical input, active power output increases, that is Pg increases, at the same time delta also increases. And with increasing mechanical input, power factor, that is cos phi, decreases for leading power factor case, for the case shown in figure, as you can observe by increasing mechanical input, the active power output of the alternator increases from PZ1 to PZ2 to PZ3, at the same time armature current also increases from IA1 to IA2, IA3 and power factor decreases. For lagging power factor case, that is when IA lags the terminal voltage V, the power factor cos phi increases for lagging power factor case with increasing mechanical input. Once the active power output of the alternator is adjusted to the desired value, the corresponding governor set point is fixed. Let us take our desired value is this PG, PG2 or whatever. So whatever desired value is fixed that is governor set point is fixed. Now, after fixed, fixing the governor set point at desired active power output, now we will study the effect of changing excitation, keeping the active power output at a desired value. So, once PG is fixed, that is PG is constant, this implies P is, PG is nothing but, we may write E V by X is sin delta, also V I A cos phi. So, once P G is fixed, that is constant, made constant by keeping the governor set point at a desired value. So, for our case, that is alternator connected to infinite bus bar, as we know that terminal voltage V will be fixed, X S is constant. So, we may write E sin delta is equal to constant as well as I A cos phi will be constant for our case where we have fixed our active power output of the alternator and we are going to study change in excitation, effect of change in excitation. So by changing excitation that is field current I F, by changing I F E will be changed in such a way that E sin delta remains constant. Similarly, by changing I F, I A will be changed as well as cos phi will also change, but I A and cos phi will change in such a way that I A cos phi remains constant. So, let us take different values of excitations. Let us take excitation I F 1, I F 2, I F 3, I F 4 and I F 5, 5 different values of excitation. So, corresponding excitation EMF will be represented by E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4, E 5. That is once field excitation is I F 1, the excitation EMF is E 1 and also write the armature currents. Let us take armature current corresponding to I F 1 is I A 1 and power factor angle is phi 1 that is power factor is cos phi 1. Corresponding to I F 2 armature current is I A 2 and power factor angle is cos phi 2. Similarly, for E 3 that is field excitation I F 3 armature current is I A 3 and power factor is cos phi 3. For field excitation I F 4 armature current is I A 4 and power factor is cos phi 4. Similarly, for field excitation I F 5 armature current is I A 5 and power factor is cos phi 5. So, Keeping these two conditions in mind, we may write E1 sin delta 1, we may write here E1 sin delta 1 will be equal to E2 sin delta 2 is equal to E3 sin delta 3 and so on. Similarly, IA1 cos phi 1 will be equal to IA2 cos phi 2 is equal to IA3 cos phi 3 is equal to I A 4 cos phi 4 is equal to I A 5 cos phi. 
So for these five different values of fill excitations, where let us take IF3 as this IF3 as normal excitation, that is right here, IF3 is equal to normal excitation. And IF2 is lesser than IF3 and IF1 is lesser than IF2 and IF3. It means the excitations IF1 and IF2 are corresponding to under excitation condition. And IF4 and IF5 are the fill excitations above IF3 that is normal excitations. That is the condition when the alternator is overexcited, when the fill currents are IF4 and IF5. So for these five fill excitations, let us focus on this phasor diagram. So for the fill excitation IF1, excitation EMF is E1 and corresponding armature current is IA1 and power factor angle is phi1. This is our terminal voltage V. So if we will write E1, this E1, so E1 is nothing but terminal voltage phasor V, that is this phasor, plus J times this IA1, so J times IA1 times XS, this one, that is this phasor. We have ignored armature resistance, hence the excitation EMF phasor E1 will be phasor sum of terminal voltage V and J IA XS. Similarly, corresponding to field excitation IF2, excitation EMF is E2, which is phasor sum of V plus J I A2 XS. This is J I A2 XS, where I2 is armature current making an power factor angle phi2 with phasor V. So this way, by increasing field excitation from IF1 to IF2, the excitation EMF has increased from E1 to E2. In such a way that these two conditions are satisfied. That is, IA1 cos phi1 is equal to IA2 cos phi2 and E1 sin delta1 is equal to E2 sin delta2. So see here, IA1 cos phi1 is horizontal projection of IA1 that is equal to this phasor. Similarly, IA2 cos phi2 is horizontal projection of this phasor along V phasor. So this way, we have drawn two parallel lines and the distance between these two parallel lines is equal to IA cos phi in such a way that IA always lies on this line and hence known as locus of IA because in all the cases we have to maintain this condition of IA1 cos phi1 is equal to IA2 cos phi2 is equal to IA3 cos phi3 and so on that is IA cos phi will always be constant. Similarly, for other conditions, that is E sin delta should be constant, that is E1 sin delta 1 is equal to E2 sin delta 2 is equal to E3 sin delta 3. So let us focus on E1 sin delta 1. This is our E1 and the angle made by E1 with phasor V will be known as delta 1. So its vertical projection, that is vertical projection of E1 will give us E1 sin delta 1, which will be equal to this E sin delta. Similarly, vertical projection of this phasor E2 will be E2 sin delta 2 where delta 2 is the load angle that is angle made by E2 with this phasor V. Fine. So vertical projection of this E2 will also be equal to E2 sin delta 2. So we can conclude that this is the locus of E where E will lie for satisfying the condition of E sin delta is equal to constant. So this line, this line is locus of E. Now let us proceed for the third condition when field excitation is changed to IF3 and we have assumed that IF3 is normal excitation. So corresponding to IF3, excitation EMF is E3 which is obtained by summing the phasor V with J IA3 axis where IA3 lies along V as we have assumed this condition as our normal excitation. Fine. So for this case also, the vertical projection will be E3 sin delta 3, which will, will be equal to the length of this. Now, if field excitation is further increased from IF3 to IF4, that is the condition will be changed from normal excitation to over excitation and excitation EMF will be changed from E3 to E4. 
So again, E4 will be obtained by adding the phases V with J I A4 axis, where I A4, see here, I A4 is the armature current which is lagging the terminal voltage V by an angle phi 4. Right? So again, we can observe that the vertical projection of this E4, that is E4 sin delta 4 will be equal to this length. And for the fifth excitation current, I A5, where excitation EMF is E5 and armature current is I A5 and power factor is cos phi 5. So for this scenario, the excitation EMF is E5, which is obtained by adding the phasors terminal voltage V with J I A5 XS, where I A5 is the armature current making an angle phi 5 with terminal voltage V. Again, for this case also, we can observe that the vertical projection of E5 will be equal to E5 sin, sin delta 5, where delta 5 is the load angle of E5 with phasor V. So, for all the five cases of field excitations, IF1, IF2, IF3, IF4 and IF5 and corresponding armature currents IA1, IA2, IA3, IA4, IA5 as well as excitations E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, we can observe that IA always lies on this line in such a way that IA cos phi remains constant. We can see the horizontal projection of IA1 that is IA1 cos phi 1 is equal to IA2 cos phi 2 is equal to IA3 cos phi 3 and cos phi 3 is 1 that is phi 3 is 0 is equal to IA4 cos phi 4 is equal to IA5 cos phi 5 remains constant. Similarly, the 5 excitation EMFs corresponding to the 5 field excitations IF1, IF2 to IF3 where IF3 is normal excitation IF5 and I. IF4, IF5. The excitation EMFs are E1, E2, E3, E4, E5. All these excitation EMFs lie, lie on this line in such a way that the condition E sin delta remains constant. We can have one more observation that or we may write directly here by increasing IF that is by increasing IF excitation EMF E increases fine and what about ia for lagging from lagging to leading that is from lagging to leading first ia in decreases see here A magnitude of ia1 is more than ia2 and ia2 is more than ia3 so we can observe that from okay we are talking about from lagging to leading so these currents are lagging these currents are lagging. So, we may observe that the magnitude of armature current first decreases from lagging to leading, attains a minimum value when the excitation is normal and again it, is, it starts increasing. So, if we will plot Ia against field current, let us write here Ia and here IF. So, we may observe that armature current first decreases, attains a minimum value and then it starts increasing. Let us take this as minimum value. This is the condition corresponding to normal excitation. We may write here normal excitation, normal excitation. And before this, this, this is the condition of leading power factor leading power factor case and this is the case of lagging power factor case and at this point power factor is unity as we can observe. When excitation EMF is lesser than normal excitation EMF that is E3, the power factor is leading as armature current leads terminal voltage V. So, once we have increased excitation currents from IA1 to IA3, the excitation EMFs have increased from E1 to E3 and at the same time armature currents have decreased from IA1 to IA3. So, this condition has been depicted here that armature current has continuously decreased when excitation EMF is increased from some zero value to normal excitation value during this fine. When IF3 is attained that is excitation is normal 
I3 has, IA has attained I3 which is normal, which is, which is minimum, minimum one. After this, if excitation is further increased from IF3 to IF4, IF5 like that, armature current has now start increasing from IA3 to IA4 and IA5. And it has started operating under lagging power factor condition. So that's why if excitation current is further increase in this range, the alternator will operate in lagging power factor condition and armature current will start increasing. Please keep in mind that we have just changed the field excitation keeping the governor's set point at a fixed value corresponding to the active power at a desired value. So let us mark this active power as P or let us say PG1 like that, PG1. So for another setting of governor's set point that is another setting of PG, let us take PG2. If we will plot this curve of IA against IF, so we will get similar curve. Let us mark here PZ2 and we will again have one minimum armature current point corresponding to normal excitation. For another setting of governor set point corresponding to another active power output of alternator connected to infinite bus bar, if we will plot this curve, so we will get similar curve. Let us mark here PZ3 and again we will have a similar curve. This curve is known as V curve. This curve as it, it looks like a V shape. What about power factor against, what about power factor against armature currents or field currents? So let us plot power factor against field current. So we may observe from this diagram that by increasing field excitation from under excited condition to over excited condition, the power factor angle, power factor angle that is phi 1, phi 2 and phi 3 0 has decreased. So once power factor angle has decreased, from under excitation to normal excitation condition, the power factor has increased till here. Once excitation has increased from normal excitation to over excitation condition, the power factor angles are increasing, that is power factor is decreasing. So if we will plot this, that is power factor against armature current, then we will observe this is cos phi and this is field excitation. So we will observe that power factor first increases and then it starts decreasing, attains a maximum value corresponding to normal excitation and then it starts decreasing. So this is the condition of leading power factor case and this is the condition of lagging power factor case, fine. Normally, as most of the loads are inductive in nature. So we, we operate our alternator in this region. Similarly, in this region. In this region. Hope it is clear to all of you. Thank you very much for attending my lecture.